Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Simple Talk. So today we are talking with Shulamit. Um, she is the owner of the Entrepreneur's Therapist. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Jenny. I think it's so great that we have this opportunity. I was telling a friend, it's going to be like having coffee with Jenny. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I have coffee. <laughs> oh, right on. Um, so I was a little terrified to say your full name. So if you want to go ahead and uh, just give that to everyone. Sure. So it's Shula Meet Bear Lev Tove. Uh, but you're welcome to call me Shula. Shula. Awesome. Awesome. And um, that's indigenous, correct? Actually, no, I'm Jewish. It's a Hebrew name. Oh, really? Yeah. I just assumed that you said right? you Well, it's so funny. <laughs> In a class, I was taking a class and I introduced my last name, myself, and Bear Lev Tove is my last name, but somebody misheard it as Bear's Left Toe <laughs> and, and assumed I was indigenous and it gave rise to a really uh, entertaining conversation. Oh, so you- wow. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good name. <laughs> is that your um, indigenous name? <laughs> No. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so if you want to just tell us a bit about um, how you got started in business and um, your journey along the way. Yeah, sure. So the Reader's Digest condensed version is I had two careers before this one. And in my in the process of the second one, uh, I became injured and couldn't do that work anymore. Uh, and so I had to do my own occupational rehab. And I had started school in social work when I was 19, but got diverted into other things. So when I, and, but I had always wanted to return to that and always had wanted to do a master's degree. So when I did my occupational rehab, what I did was I went back to school, got my master's degree and became a social worker because I wanted to go into private practice as a therapist. And one of the things how I got into business is that as a woman later in life, I wanted to finish my master's before I was 50 and I did it. I was 48, 48, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I did it before I was 50. Um, But like starting a career from zero at the age of like late 40s, early 50s, uh, as a woman, your prospects are not good. So I knew that I was going to be going into practice for myself and I needed to learn about business because in order to have a sustainable business that was going to support me basically until the day I died, because I came into the work. Uh, place in the 80s. And there were people think the gig economy started now. But uh, no, I'm here to tell you it's been here for 40 years. In the 80s, there were no jobs, there were only contracts. So I have no pension or anything like that. So my job, my business had to support me until the bitter end kind of thing. So I went right into business training and business coaching so that I could have a sustainable business. And it was in the process of understanding how to run a business and hanging out with other entrepreneurs and being the only therapist in that group that, and through my own experience and through hearing from other folks, I understood the intersection of mental health and entrepreneurship, how hard running a business is on your mental and emotional well-being, And that's how the entrepreneur's therapist was born. That's awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. So, so tell us a bit about the work that you do with your clients. So now the work that I do I was not originally uh, a therapist who worked exclusively with entrepreneurs. I was initially a trauma therapist. And so I'm bringing my understanding of trauma to the work that I do because trauma is much more widespread than we would think. And it has an impact on our businesses and it has an impact on how we relate to our businesses, how our, how we structure our businesses, what kind of bosses we are for ourselves. And so that's one element is understanding Uh, how trauma shows up and how the nervous system responds to the intense and ongoing chronic stress of entrepreneurship, which is very similar to trauma responses. The nervous system has a similar response when it's exposed to chronic stress. So working on the mental and emotional well-being, supporting folks, first of all, with being met, heard, and understood and validated in the experience of just how effing difficult it is. And then once the emotional aspect is cared for, then folks have regained their capacity to be like their own inner wisdom, to connect with their own inner wisdom about what's needed in their business, what's needed for them as a, like tactically or strategically in their business. I'm not a coach, but I can hold space while people and reflect to 
people what I've heard them say so that they can find their own way forward in with tactics or strategies in their business uh, and or how they can or want to handle conflict, leadership issues, all those kinds of interpersonal things that also come up in business. So there's two aspects, the emotional support and then um, the thought partner work. Oh, I uh, really relate to that because I have chronic stress. <laughs> I actually went through a period in my life where I was so sick. Like I was covered in eczema. I lost like most of my hair and I was just like, I don't know what's happening to me. Like they thought I had lupus, um, but apparently it was just chronic stress. <laughs> right. And yeah. so I got some, you know, ways to deal with that and overcame, but it's still obviously there. Um, right. It has, so, yeah, it plays a role. Near, near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. And I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs struggle, especially post pandemic. This is just what we were talking about here. So yeah, I feel like a lot of burnout lately, mm -hmm. um, like repeated burnout. And I don't, mm -hmm. I'm like, is something going on? Like, <laughs> and like, may it, may it may be residual from the pandemic. What do you think? That's exactly what I would think. Uh, in fact, I find it a little, um, I'm concerned to hear people talking about burnout because I think it's a misattribution or a misunderstanding of what's actually happening. It's also not an accurate reflection of what burnout actually is. Uh, if you look at the World Health Organization, there's a very specific de definition of burnout. I think what happens, what's happening is we are emotionally, mentally, and physically exhausted, which is different from burnout because burnout in particular involves this kind of like, um, kind of bitterness, a kind of like, hopelessness or helplessness uh, that just what's happening, what I'm seeing, nobody's okay right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but what I would say is people are depleted and exhausted mentally and emotionally and entrepreneurs all the more so because of how we've had to scramble over the past couple of years, how we've had to engage all our creative faculties, how we've had to uh, come up on the fly with new strategies and new ways of doing business. And I think the other aspect of what's in, in affecting people now is, uh, and particularly entrepreneurs, the image I like to use is if you've ever seen horses at a race, racetrack and they have the pace car and the pace car has the wings and the horses are all behind the wings of the pace car. So they're being held back. They're running, but they're being held back. And we have been waiting and waiting and waiting for the pace car to fold its wings so we could take off. But what happens is it folds its wings and we've all fallen down because we are so worn out from being held back for so long. And we had this expectation that we would have this like jubilant release and we could tear down the racetrack, like in all our glory, feeling great. And that's not what's happening now. Uh, so there's confusion around, why am I not feeling like that? Why am I not feeling the joyous release that I thought I would feel. Why am I not happy now that things are back to normal? And the, the, the pandemic was a collective global trauma. And this is the case, whether you believed what was happening or didn't believe what was happening. Either way, it was terrifying. And when you're exposed to terrifying events to that extent for that period of time, it has a traumatic impact on your nervous system. I'm not saying everybody's gonna have PTSD, but We've all been through a trauma and that has an impact, right? Yeah. And so the recovery from an event that significant of that duration is going to be as long or longer, right? We can't expect to be feeling, it's like when you've had surgery. Well, sure, the like I had hip surgery in uh, September. I had a new hip, that was great. But the impact of the surgery took like six months from which to recover, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's basically the, the analogy we need the, the, the quote unquote bad is quote unquote gone, but we have to recover from the effects of that. And so what I think is really called for is just a lot of kindness to ourselves and to one another that no wonder I'm feeling what I'm feeling. Like, no wonder there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with any of us. This is what we would expect to be experiencing after what we've been through. Right. So just no wonder. Yeah. 
it's uh kind of feels like uh that was three years and it just is like gone it didn't even yeah. seem like it was that long yeah. and it's just yeah. gone but yeah 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 I'm in that space where I'm like everything is like oh, you know what I mean like I just want to not <laughs> but I'm getting there I'm getting there yeah yeah <laughs> I have the same feelings and I had a peer support session this morning and the, my, my peer uh, was feeling the same way. I'm hearing this from folks in the mastermind that I'm in from folks in the thriving visibility program that we're both in. Uh, I'm seeing it online uh, amongst other entrepreneurs. Like this is, it's not just you. It's not just me, you know? Um, is there some tips or things that you could give people to maybe help with that? Yeah. So the first tip I always give is what I just said about the no wonder thing, just self-kindness in that regard. Like just, there's nothing wrong with me for what I'm going through to be constantly, consistently reassuring yourself that there's nothing wrong with me. And the second thing would be to find some, uh, fun and play because the antidote right to stress is to nourish your soul and your spirit with things that are um, nourishing and enjoyable so that you have some of those happy hormones to, to provide a balance. They don't, the happy hormones is really important because toxic positivity tells us positive vibes kind of uh, like will make the bad stuff go away. Right. And then it's bad to be with the negative, but really what we have to do first is validate ourselves right? To recognize that the negative is the way it is, but then to engage in some play, some connections, some fun, some joyfulness, something that's nourishing, pleasant to balance the scales. So the bad is still there, but we have more resources to handle it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's You're been welcome. a pleasure having you and I'm sure everybody learned a lot from this. I hope so. So thanks so much. Thanks, Jenny.